So even if all humans are from Africa originally, obviously we left there at some point. I live in New York. I had to get here somehow. So let's talk about how humans dispersed across the rest of the world. So you might remember this really cool paper. In 2018, Roberts and Stewart actually defined an entire new ecological niche just for us. Yep, that's how special we are. We have our own term that no other species has. We are generalist specialists. So here they noted that humans do something weird. Um, instead of being a generalist and occupying a lot of moderate environments or a specialized that occupies an extreme environment, we do both. That's kind of weird. It's kind of cool. Um, so here they note that expansions of Homo sapiens beyond Africa may have also involved often specialized adaptations to a diversity of extreme environments, little used or wholly uninhabited by other members of the hominin clade, including deserts, high plateau and mountain systems, the Paleoarctic and tropical rainforests. So this is cool because this is one of the ways that our species, Homo sapiens, is different from all other hominins that came before us. Sure, our ancestors were cool. We got a lot of um, cool adaptations from them, but we took it to the next level and now we conquered the rest of the world. So this is a cool um, map showing some of the different extreme environments around the world and some of the first dates of occupation. Um, so there's some high altitude and the Paleoarctic, such as the Tibetan Plateau, Ethiopian Highlands, Siberia, the Andes. Um, there's also rainforests. So there's Southeast Asia, um, Central Africa, and then the Amazon rainforest, um, and also deserts. Um, so the Sahara, um, Saudi Arabia, um, and the Gobi Desert. And while we're not living in the middle, the middle of some of these deserts, we are living in and near several of them. And that's a hard place to live. So the idea of a generalist specialist here is, well, overall, our species are generalists, individual populations can specialize to these extreme environments. Um, there are a few biological adaptations, but by and large, it's mostly through cultural adaptations. So it is tools, clothing, using the environment in a very intentional way. And that is what is allowing us to survive. And that's one of the reasons we have such wonderful cultural diversity, because these different cultures are adapted to different environments. Unfortunately, it does cause some conflict today. So I encourage you to uh, view that cultural uh, diversity as an amazing response and one of the ways our species is so uh, variable and flexible. Of course, there are a few biological adaptations. So we see, um, you know, differences in allometry or body proportion, and there are some um, specific adaptations to respiration, especially associated with high altitude. But let's talk about dispersal from Africa. Um, so the date at which we left Africa is hotly debated. Some people think it's as early as 120,000 years ago. Other people think it's much later, around 50,000 years ago. Um, and uh, there are different routes. So did we go through the Levant, kind of like a more northern route? Or was it more a southern route? So like down the, um, through the southern half of Saudi Arabia and going, you know, maybe along the coast of India. Um, we do know that around 50,000 years ago, we were in Australia. Um, by 40,000 years ago, we were in Europe. And then um, 20 to 10,000 years ago, we were in the Americas. The peopling of the Americas is another hotly debated topic of when and how. Um, we'll get to that in just a bit. Um, so here's a nice map kind of putting it all together. Uh, of course, Africa first, um, the Middle East next, and then um, spreading out from there. Um, remember, the dates super hotly debated, but, you know, we um, dispersed into the Middle East, and from there, some went to Europe, and then others um, went over to Asia. Some went down south um, into South Asia and um, Indonesia and Australia, and then others went north. So, of course, many people stayed in Asia itself, but some went over and populated the Americas. Um, let's remember um, there was a glacial maximum happening. So it was a little bit colder, more water was stored in the ice caps, and that meant more um, of the continent of the continents were exposed. So you can see kind of this darker area that was actually all land. Um, 
about 15,000 years ago. Um, there were also some glaciers here, so it wasn't necessarily super passable, but it wasn't ocean. Um, and because of this, this has given us a couple different ideas for um, how we think people got to the Americas in the first place. Um, so this is a really nice graphic that shows the three different hypotheses. There is the land bridge hypothesis that our ancestors walked over the land bridge around 13 to 14,000 years ago. There's a coastal migration hypothesis that it happened a little bit earlier and people were actually going along the coast of this continent, um, probably, you know, with, you know, some form of boats, though certainly not like boats that were safe in the middle of the ocean. Um, there's also this other hypothesis, hypothesis, the solution hypothesis that people came over the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, that one's bullshit. Don't, don't pay attention to that. Um, overall, the coastal migration hypothesis does seem to be most supported, especially since we're finding fairly early sites in South America. So the site of Monte Verde in Chile was occupied by 4,800 years ago. So had to get there somehow. Um, it's also really interesting to look at migrations at different parts of the world. One of the ones that fascinates me the most is looking at the islands of Micronesia, Melanesia, and Polynesia, because uh, they're kind of far from the mainland, and there's a lot of ocean there. Um, so it's really interesting looking at modern day populations from these parts of the world and trying to figure out how people got there in the first place. Um, so here is a map where we've tried to map out when and how modern humans got to these different places. Um, so Indonesia has been populated for a while, but kind of more remote islands such as Hawaii and Easter Island, these are much more recently colonized. And the craziest thing, native Madagascarians are actually more closely related to Indonesians. It's ancient Polynesians. They're the crazy ones who just like went across the Indian Ocean and populated Madagascar. It's not, it wasn't um, populated by native Africans who are much more close. But anyway, yeah, Polynesians are amazing and crazy with their boats. I, I'm flabbergasted. Um, I hate boats. I'm never going to go on them. Um, but it's really cool to see that humans are so flexible that we have been able to go to so many different places and do so many different things. We're climbing up really high mountains where it's hard to breathe. We're creating boats so we can conquer all of these different islands. We're figuring out ways to live in the desert. Um, so we are in all sorts of different places. And this is one of the ways that humans are unique. So can you explain? How did anatomically modern humans migrate across the world?